Yeah. So just for the uh, for the audience, uh, we will do our talk, and then we have uh, some time afterwards to uh, answer any questions. We are really interested in uh, feedback from people from, uh, well, not from Norway, where we are from, but from US and any other country in the world. Um, and we will also be uh, around here both on uh, tomorrow and on Sunday. But it's time to get started. Uh, hello, my name is Per. I'm uh, from Norway, and uh, I have with me Cecilia. And we are going to talk about fool, uh, fool me once, fool me twice, hacking Norwegian banks using uh, paper ID. So, Cecilia, about yourself? Yes. Um, whenever people ask me, how did you get into security? I have to tell them, uh, my background is psychology. I don't know anything about programming. Uh, I have a master in philosophy of technology. Uh, and I have a background as a software tester. I've been doing that for years. And after testing a lot of software, that's how I got into security. More specifically, abusability. I, by the way, I, I love, I adore humans. I may load a few individuals, but I love humans in general. Yeah. Um, so when I uh, do software testing, I keep asking myself, how can I mess up someone's life with this software? And of course, I'm asking this because I'm a nice person, because I want to fix it. I'm not trying to mess up your lives. Yeah, and on September 1st, it's uh, to the day, 30 years since I started in information security. So that's uh, the stuff I know. Uh, I have a very healthy obsession into passwords. Uh, I'm also divorced. There's no connection there, of course. And been working in my pre two previous previous positions as a CISO for uh, uh, what we in Norway would say big corporations that would be very small sized companies uh, here in the US. And um, yeah, I have... Uh, done all kinds of stuff within information security. But today it's a little bit more, you know, the, uh, the basics of our talks is, has to do a little bit with hacking. Uh, the term use of abusability, uh, I, I can I, you know, show of hands, do you know the term abusability and what we mean by that? Some do, okay, very quickly, abusability again, I'm gonna use a piece of software to make your life really, really bad. As a stalker, your ex, your spouse for that matter and so on. And then we also have responsible disclosure, which should also be uh, known to you. Uh, the work that we two do uh, together, uh, you know, we are, it is very important for us to follow responsible disclosure. We don't want to mess up things for real. We find problems and we try to fix them. We don't want to give any recipe for the bad actors out there to do bad things. And, um, Norway, where we live, we are four and a half, five million people, so it's a, a, a small country uh, in population, uh, and we are very digital. I actually found that out just a, a short while ago. Um, uh, I suddenly had to sign a piece of paper, and I discovered that I don't have a pen at home, uh, and I try to remember, and it's probably like four or five years since the last time I actually used a pen. Whenever I do interact with the government for healthcare, for insurance, banks, whatever, I do it online. And the last time I used cash back at home in Norway, I, I'm not sure really. Uh, four, five, six, seven years ago, maybe something like that. We use card and we have Apple Pay, Google Pay and all that stuff. What we don't do yet is we don't do our elections online. <laughs> <laughs> and if it is up to me, we're going to uh, continue doing that on paper. But okay, so uh, we, we, have, we can do credit checks. Uh, we have a debt register, so you can go online and find out how much money you owe. And also, if you want to get a mortgage for a house or a car, anything like that, the bank can check how much money do you owe to which companies, as an example. Uh, so it's a sort of like, a, I would say, a very transparent society that we have. And we trust our government. We trust each other which can be a problem sometimes, but again, we are really happy about the democracy that we have in Norway. And uh, of course, we're a little bit uh, curious about, you know, how this works in, in the US, being here right now. Um, and uh, this talk is a little bit about uh, power of attorney, giving somebody else access to your bank account. Um, in Norway, it's easy to do. 
um, you can do it online. I can log on to my bank and I can say that I want my friend Cecilia to have access to my bank account because I'm sick, I'm disabled, I'm going to the hospital for surgery, I will be away for some time and I will allow her to handle my financial stuff. Uh, this can be useful in, uh, in romantic uh, partnerships, uh, this uh, for, for kids. <laughs> um, and of course, as I said, if you have disabilities and stuff like that, uh, this can be really useful. At least that's what we saw from the advertisements from the banks that came about many years ago. They said, do not give away your digital identity to somebody else give them a power attorney access to your account instead. That's the proper way of doing it. Because we have a digital ID in Norway called Bank ID. I used to be a CISO there, so I pretty know, <laughs> I know a lot about it. And that's your digital ID that is legally you. So never give that away to anyone. Now, <clears throat> this, this is interesting because if I give Cecilia access to my bank account, uh, we saw this and I have no special needs. I don't need anyone to handle my finances in the same way around. But the bank said we have a paper form to do this as well, because in some cases you don't have bank ID. As an example, Norway is now receiving quite a lot of Ukrainian refugees. I'm happy that we do that. But since we don't have a credit history for them, we don't know anything about them, they will have to wait for quite some time before they get into the digital society of Norway. Then you have disabled people, uh, people that have a legal guardian, as an example, they will not receive a bank ID because you can do quite a few stupid things with a legal ID online as well. So um, I, um, I thought that, well, Cecilia, we, we got to test this stuff. Would you like access to my bank account? And uh, she said, uh, yeah, sure. Let's, uh, let's try it out. Let's see what happens. Uh, and by the way, I tend to sometimes be a bit stupid on these things. So I like to challenge people and usually I'm proven wrong and I regret it. But here's the thing. So uh, the challenge was sort of for Cecilia, instead of giving her legal access, it was like a game of you will try to obtain a legal access to my account, but we are cooperating on this. So, you know, we don't break the law. We don't break the rules of the bank but you will need to get access to my bank account using a paper form, plain old paper, and let's see if that is going to work. Yes. Um, banks have a lot of security, a lot of security. If you're gonna do uh, any kind of pen testing or hacking or bounty hunting, don't bother with the banks. Uh, there, there's so many measures in place. However, it's important to remember that those measures that they have in place, they're not your security measures. They are their security measure. And most of the time, there's an overlap. You don't want to get robbed, and they don't want to be the bank that gets robbed. However, once in a while, these things tend to split. This is the paper form. The challenge is, of course, I have to figure out his name, his address, his social security number, his bank account number. I also need some witnesses, and I need to sign it, both as him and me. And this is very interesting because, well, name and address, look up the phone book. It's not difficult. Social security numbers are not secrets. It's they are absolutely not secrets. They are treated like secrets, but they are not secrets. It's a, an identification number. So it's a predictable number. Um, roughly speaking, doesn't take a lot of guessing. And also, there were some services that were very helpful letting me verify it. Um, they didn't know that. The most difficult part here is actually the bank account number. Now, bank account numbers are by design not a secret. They're not secret. However, uh, I didn't happen to have his bank account number, so I need a little bit of help, but you know, we found a way around it. Uh, some back and forth, and we uh, got hold, or I got a hold of his bank account number. Witnesses, 
Beautiful. I love all the helpful people around. They're not always sure what they're signing, but they are very helpful. Thank you for your service. Signature. Signature is very, very, very interesting because <laughs> when did you last sign your name on a piece of paper? This week? Last week? A month? I don't sign my name on anything and I don't sign my name on anything and give it to the bank. So if they're going to compare my signature and probably his as well, it's going to be to a very, very, very old signature. So that was my, that was the, the part that I was nervous about. So yeah, you're a hundred percent not surprised, but yes, I did get access. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen when I, we started this project, but we discovered there were absolutely no controls. And most surprisingly, he didn't get notified. I didn't get notified. I just happened to discover uh, I have access now. One evening that I was logging on to see how is it going? Do I get access soon? Yes, I have full access. Um, full access. I have full access. I have 10 years of your history, banking history. Hmm. I didn't really think about that. She could actually see 10 years of <laughs> transactions on my credit card. That was like, um, yes. shit. <laughs> I know you really well. Uh, I did get... I, I had already been several times to Vegas. <laughs> um, yes, you are my retirement plan. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yes, I did get all your money as well. Um, what I didn't, what I couldn't do was pay his bills. Which, what? If I was going to do this for legal and good reasons to help you out and not just mess around with you. Paying the bills is the most important part of this. Anyways. She, for, she, could, she could do all the bad things and the one thing that I really want her to help me with because I'm sick or disabled is to pay my bills. And that's the one thing she couldn't do. And she can't do that t today either. Nope. So we have been sort of saying like, this system is, uh, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't actually work. work. No, it does, does not possible. work. Yeah. Um, anyways, we're very nice people. You can trust us, really. So, of course, we did the right thing. Number one, we did tell the banks. We also let them fix the issue before we told anyone else. Now, this was an unpaid project, so we can't tell anyone else. And then we dutifully warned the public. Let me emphasize that. We warned the public by going into the newspapers, telling about this, so that other banks, because there are more than, you know, a few, there's a lot of them, and I cannot spend all my evenings and weekends fixing their stuff and giving them one-on-one -on -one consultations uh, unpaid. So, you know, they have to learn from what's out in the media and so on. So we did this, exhaled, waited a little bit. Do you want to go on? Yeah. You know, you find a vulnerability and go public about it as soon as it's been fixed in one bank. And the reason for going public is to warn all the other banks that we found this vulnerability and you should check your systems, your procedures for checking paper forms and the hand signature on, on that on them and um <laughs> we thought they actually read the articles and did that so we waited a couple of years and then it was like do you uh do you think they have fixed it now and then we went at it at a new bank and uh yeah you know the answer we did it again the exact same way but we also found some interesting uh, um, differences between the first bank and the second bank. And that was also with uh, approximately four years between those two hacks. Um, and um, in, uh, in the new hack, the, the second bank that we did this, 
suddenly we saw that, well, B as the account owner, I could actually see that her name was on the tra transactions that she had done on sort of like my behalf. She couldn't pay my bills, but she could move all my money to a foreign account in Aruba or someplace like that. Go figure. Uh, you know, perfect power attorney <laughs> access. And it's also important to say this is, you know, it's all or nothing. There's no granular access here. All or nothing access. So that was a good thing um, compared to the previous test. Now I could see that transactions had been um, carried out by Cecilia or myself. First bank, all transactions showed up as I did it. We even called the bank and I said, I didn't do this. And they said, yes, you did. And I say, well, I have a sort of a legal guardian or power of attorney given to another friend. And they said, well, it's, you know, if you trust that person, that's your problem, not ours. So there you go. So it was good to see that in the second bank, we could, I could actually see she had been doing the transactions. But there was also some uh, bad things here. Um, Cecilia? Yeah. So there was only one bank that had started improving the interfaces to help people like Ped that may get uh, taken advantage of uh, and robbed by loved ones. Uh, and this is the conclusion from uh, the investigation and the project is that protecting yourself from this kind of fraud or scam is pretty much impossible. Because a lot of the time, you well, you don't get notified and it's hard to see that someone else have access to your account. And when you don't see in transaction list the different names, it's even more, you end up gaslighting yourself. What did, did I buy that online? I didn't know that. You know, you start questioning yourself, should I get my brain tested? Do I, is this early dementia? You know, so super hard to see if someone have access and that is not a good thing. Now, of course, I don't know, like, is there anyone here? No, you don't have to put your hand up, but I hope some of you either work in a bank or at least have a bank and feel like complaining to them because what's really important is to be notified ahead of time, not just like five minutes, but a week at least so that the sick and disabled pet uh, have time to worry and figure out and get out of his sick bed and call the bank and say, hey, I got this notification. I don't know what's going on. Could you tell me? So they can stop it before I rob him. It should absolutely be visible for the account holder to see who's done transactions on his account. And if I can really, really ask, be difficult and ask, can we get transaction limits? and co-signing for bigger amounts, it is insane that I can tell, th there's an all or nothing. Now, what can you do except from complaining to your bank, because you should? If you need a power of attorney or gonna have a, what's called a joint account that's, that we have here in the US, make sure it's a new account. But sweetie, <laughs> Whoever you're sharing your account with, they don't need to know the last 10 years what you've been up to. Also, you need to spread your money out on several accounts or banks. I'm very aware that banking in the US is very much a locking situation because of your credit store system, uh, but try spread it out. So in case it turns out whoever you're trusting is not as trustworthy, you're not losing all of your money. And that's it, really. That's the only advice I can give you. Now, do you have any questions? Yes. So again? <laughs> no, but I can tell what I did with the money. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, that, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Tell them what you did with my money, my money. <laughs> I'm a very nice person. So in addition to transfer a very small amount to myself, I of course donated to uh, cancer, breast cancer, I think, uh, specifically. Breast cancer research. Yes. yes. However, uh, you may not be uh, familiar with European law, but if you donate money or contact any organization, they are allowed to contact you. Right, Ped? 
So uh, earlier this year, I was visiting Gdansk in Poland. Uh, I went for the first time in my life to one of the uh, concentration camps to uh, remember history. And walking in the streets in Gdansk, relaxing for a few days, uh, my phone calls. I answer because I usually do that. Um, and it's the Norwegian um, Cancer Society or something like that in Norway who calling me like, oh, thank you so much for your gift to us. Uh, and we would really like to ask you if you're impo uh, you know, interested in supporting us anymore. And I was like, dementia? I, I, I'm, I'm just 52. Like, did I ever donate to Norwegian Cancer Association? Ah. Um, you know, I, I, I got to come back to you again, but uh, it's a really good course. And yeah, I will probably don donate more money later on. And then it came to me like, somebody had access to my bank account. <laughs> so, well, a really good course, fully supported, going to donate again, but that was, yeah, that was a little bit of a surprise. We can also go back to the paper form just to make sure that you really understand the lack of controls. We used several colored pen, uh, <laughs> pens. pens to sign the form. We had several people write our names, first and last name and so on. So if you look at the fill out paper form, it's like crazy. It's, it doesn't make sense at all. And of course, the signatures were completely wrong as well. So if they did a signature verification against my 30 year old uh, signature on file that they have in my bank, it's like it doesn't look anything like my original signature at all. So they didn't verify anything. It just went through. That was crazy to us. Yeah. So going forward uh, into a more digital world, be it in the US or in Iceland or Japan or wherever you are, uh, remember that going digital, there will still be a lot of people that need to use paper forms. And the security of those paper forms has to be equal to the digital security that you're implementing. And that's sort of the, you know, important end of, of uh, our talk here. And we'll be around for a little bit. So questions, feel free. Thank you so much again.